Good afternoon, Ms. Spector. We have the whole team here. Uh, Dave speaking now, and then uh, Devin, Josie, and Gabe. And then, hi, Jenny. Uh, thanks again for uh, joining us today. First off, I, I just want to say how thrilled we are to be able to support the museum. The these last few weeks of research have just really shown us what a unique place it, it truly is. Uh, I also just want to say that during our initial conversation about a month ago, you spoke about wanting to expand the museum and hire some much needed staff. I just want to reassure you that we took that into consideration throughout this entire project and we kept it in the back of our minds and it went into everything that we did. So this afternoon, we're going to take you through some of the research that we did, the plan we created from that research, and then the next steps and the recommendations moving forward. And finally, we'll have some, uh, we'll be available for any questions that you may have. So we started this plan with research. Based on our initial conversation a month ago, you had said that your primary means of communicating with your audience was through your social media. So that's where we wanted to start. So we decided to do a social media content analysis. So we, we analyzed all of your social media posts across Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram from January 1st of this year to July 15th. That totaled to be 445 posts. And what we found from that that was actually pretty interesting was that military theme posts are 2% of your total posts during that time period. But they reached 141% more people on Facebook and 14% more people on Instagram on average than all other posts. They were also shared 41% more, they were liked 60% more, and they were commented on 75% more. On top of this, we also looked at how the number of hashtags and accounts tagged and the number of photos of posts, how that corresponds with the total reach of the post. And what we found was that on Twitter, having three or less hashtags coincided with a 65% increase in reach of the post. Instagram was actually the opposite. On Instagram, including four or more hashtags coincided with a 31% uh, increase in reach on the post. As far as picture goes across all three of these platforms, including one picture on a social media post coincided with a 17% increase in average reach of the post compared to all others. So what this social media content analysis told us is not only that military themed posts perform very well, but it also gave us a lot of good information to apply to future social media efforts uh, for the museum. So now that we knew that military theme posts perform well, we wanted to know what military public affairs professionals knew about the museum. And Jenny, just to kind of bring the same page, um, military public affairs officers are the military's version of uh, PR professionals. So we wanted to know what they know. So we decided to create a survey. And uh, Ms. Spector, this is the survey that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago with the email distro list. So we created the survey and we sent it out. And within about 48 hours, we received 236 responses from uh, active duty military, retired military, uh, reservists, government, service civilians that worked in public affairs for the military at some point or another. And we did this through, we, uh, we got some distro lists through professional organizations like the US Navy Public Affairs Association. And we've got some interesting findings from the survey we found that military public affairs professionals collectively have little to no knowledge about the Museum of Public Relations. However, they are very interested in knowing the history of military public affairs. We also found that 63% of respondents are at least somewhat active on social media, which is great for us because that's our primary means of communicating with our audience. Part of our research also involved looking at the competition. Now we define competition as museums that are competing with the Museum of Public Relations for visitors and donations. And we measure competition through their social media and traditional media presence, their geographic location and their military tie. And based on our findings, we determined that your strongest competition is the 9-11 Museum and the International Center of Photography Museum. However, your competitive advantage is that you're the only PR museum in the world. <laughs> the last part of our research involved looking at the Museum of Public Relations strengths. Ms. Spector, the greatest strength is your dedication. That is Shelley Spector's dedication to running this museum. 
as well as also your location. We both know that uh, Lower Manhattan is a great tourist hotspot, so that's, uh, that's always a great asset. Ms. Spector, from all this research, we determined that military-themed social media posts are the museum's most engaging posts. However, military public affairs professionals collectively have little to no knowledge about the Museum of Public Relations. And that's why our goal is to increase awareness about the museum to military public affairs practitioners. And in order to guide us to get to that goal, we developed three objectives. And these objectives would take place over a one month time span. And our first objective is to increase knowledge about the museum to military public affairs practitioners uh, by 10% in that time. Uh, another objective is to increase shares from DOD affiliated Facebook accounts from zero to an average of five um, in that one month. And we also wanted to increase reactions or likes uh, to that military PA themed content by 10%. And in order to get to those objectives, we needed to define our audience. And uh, we created our target publics. And our primary audience is the military public affairs practitioners as well as general civilian PR practitioners. And all of these um, personnel or practitioners would have former formal uh, military or formal public affairs schooling. They'd be over 22 years old and they have a social media presence. Um, we also came up with several other audiences and that is those former military public affairs practitioners, retirees, veterans, and also the um, Department of Defense civilian public affairs specialist. And to reach those key publics, we needed to create the top key themes and messages. And we developed our themes of history, that the museum tells everyone's story, and that it is a world-class museum. And to help with those, our messaging is that people can take a walk through the evolution of communication and that people can use the exhibits to interact with the past. And also sharing um, with people that the museum supports academic and professional development across the PR community around the world. And the most important, that no other museum in the world does this, that the webinars, the virtual tours, the social media really gives people a firsthand look at the background and history of PR. And um, in order to accomplish all this and uh, share what we want to share with everyone, we developed our two main strategies, and that is outreach and encouraging engagement. And in order to carry out the, those strategic plans, we developed the tactics of a social media campaign and a military public relations webinar panel. Ms. Spector. Um, as Dave and Josie Lynn both mentioned, um, we had content analysis that we did. We did a survey. The content analysis and survey led us to our goals and objectives, which led us to our tactics. Um, and as Josie Lynn mentioned, we're looking at doing social media and we're also looking to do a webinar. And so what we found was like, you know, in this, this group, our, our target audience that lo knows very little about the museum they have that high interest in uh, PR history in the military. So why don't we give them what they want? We know that uh, military posts perform well, um, and we also know that this target group has uh, uh, interest in military PR history. So what better time for him to do it then is um, within the 75th anniversary of World War II. And so several of the posts that you'll see, I'll show you here in a moment, um, correlate to World War II history, they correlate to different times uh, in history, and so we thought this would be a good driving um, piece for this, this uh, group. And how are we going to approach this? We're, we're doing this in a gradual way. Rather than inundate your social media accounts with a bunch of military posts to push to this audience, we're going to gradually do that. Um, right now I'm going to show you what the calendar kind of looks like and, and walk you through that. Okay, so as you can see, like the, the first post actually starts on the 14th of August. This is a flashback Friday post. And what that post entails is this famous kiss uh, in 1945 in New York. Um, as you can see down at the bottom of the screen, we have your logo there. 
Um, branding is important. So every time they see a post, they're going to see your brand as well. Um, and so what we're doing is once a week, we're going to post three times a week. And what we've done is we've looked at specific time frames where um, it's like a social media hotspot. People engage in the morning between five and six, um, 11 and 12, and seven and nine. And just another clip, kind of show you what the, the feel of these themes. Um, and then what we're building towards is our culminating event, which is the webinar. Um, so this webinar uh, is, it, it, it brings together everything that we've done to this point. Uh, so the, the post three times a week um, with different content, and then we even have hashtags for specific uh, placements. So the hashtags that we chose go directly with the content that we're posting. Um, they're high placement hashtags uh, to drive more people to see the content that we're posting. Um, additionally, we're tagging certain people that we've worked with in the industry, uh, certain media that we've worked with based on the fact that we know them and also based on their background. Additionally, we're also uh, tagging the people that we want to target in these posts. And again, this is all leading up to the one thing that we really want to push, which is that webinar, which Devin can tell you more about. When planning this event, we thought, what better way to take a walk through Navy's PR history than to speak with those who were actually there? Carl Redding, retired Marine, worked in military public relations for over 20 years. He'll lead this panel discussion featuring Navy Chiefs of Information from the past and the present. They've served in different decades and we'll talk about their experience, demonstrating just how far military PR has come. Co-branding this event with Defense Information School is the perfect opportunity to, is the perfect opportunity to reach the target audience. They have access year round to Department of Defense affiliated military and, pub and civilian public relations professionals. We understand that budget was a concern, so we took that into account when planning this event and planning this campaign. We used free software to create the webinar panel and the social media posts. So you're probably wondering what happens next? What happens after the webinar event, after the social media campaign? How do we know that we've reached our audience? How can we measure our success? Evaluation is an important piece of this campaign, of this campaign process. And we recommend working with San Diego State University to distribute the post-campaign survey. This is very similar to the pre-campaign survey and will really allow you to measure those changes in the knowledge and attitude about the museum. We also recommend conducting the same type of social media content analysis for the timeframe presented in this campaign. With that, Ms. Spector, we want to thank you so much for this opportunity and we look forward to where this campaign will go. We'll now open up for questions.